Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the online course podcast, the place where online course creators go to sell more of their online courses. I'm super excited because I have a very special guest on the line this week. A little bit about this person. He's the CEO and founder of Piano in 21 Days. He makes over six figures a month selling his online piano courses. He also now helps online course creators actually succeed with their online courses. He's the CEO and founder of the Online Course Guy. He's the host of the Online Course Podcast, and he's the owner of the Online Course Community Facebook Group. So without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Mr. Jax Hopkins. Jax, hey, John. Hey, Jonathan. Thanks so much for having me here. That's quite an introduction. Uh, you're making me look good, man. I mean, the the six figures a month. I mean, that sounds pretty amazing. And uh, man, even even to me right now, that sounds appealing. I've had a couple of pretty strong months this year, but um, going as far as saying that I make six figures a month for my <laughs> piano course, you know, it's it's very successful. I do very well, but that's that may not be completely the truth. And let's get into that a little bit as we talk about. Uh, you know, I'm pretty pr- transparent with my numbers and and what people could expect from online courses. So I'm excited to dive into all this uh, with you today. And, and of course, you're a fellow course creator here, so I'm sure we're going to have fun. Yes, for sure. And I'll even piggyback on, on that a little bit. I quite liked following your journey, Jax. So I listened to, to Jax's podcast, and then he was dripping it. You know, a couple of months ago, he's like, I'm so close to my first six-figure month. You know, I, I think a couple more and I'll get there and I'll do it. And it was really cool to, to follow that journey. So I, I liked that there. But before we get into that, Jax, I like to start all my podcasts off with a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up. Have you got one for us? Man, one of the quotes I've been dropping a lot lately, especially to my, to my followers in the, the online course space and a lot of my students, is, is people are not against you. They are for themselves. Mm. And that quote will come up when people are talking about like trolls or haters, which, you know, in my opinion, you are that when you, when you start getting trolls and haters and things like that, that's one of the signs you're kind of doing things right. Um, because if you try to walk that fence and make everybody happy, um, then, then you're probably not as successful as you could be. So I have to remind people of that quote. Um, because at the end of the day, that's, that's true. Like if somebody is, is coming at you negatively, you got to think about what is their perspective. For example, you would not believe the amount of hate that I get from normal piano teachers. No. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's man, they can use some vulgar language. I'll tell you that. Um, but that's, you know, because I have haters out there like that, I feel like that is a reason that I, I know that I'm doing something right. Um, and, and I've got a lot of people that love me and a lot of people that hate me as well. And I think that's okay. Yes. Love that. I'll, I'll piggyback off that as well. I love that quote in, in two major reasons as well. I like it from a sales side of things. You know, I feel if someone says yeah. no to you, they're not necessarily saying no to you because it's not a fit for them. And then same thing with your, with your course, you know, when you're creating it, we may think that, you know, we know everything and we know the best thing for those people, but really those people want what they want. So that's the way I look into sales, the way I look into course creation. Yes, I'm going to give them what I need, but they're for themselves. How can I make it a win for them? You know, they don't care uh, if I've got 20 years experience in the piano or if I've got a PhD, like that doesn't, doesn't care about them. It's, hey, how can we help them? So I like that side of it. And then I like the, um, the success side of it too. The way I look at that is if you try and please everyone, you're going to end up not really pleasing anyone. Or I think the official quote is, if you try and speak to everyone, you're going to speak to no one. It's impossible to try and please every single person out there. So, hey, pick your lane, pick what you're really good at, pick what you believe in, and then some people are going to love you for that. Some people are going to hate you for that, but it's okay. It's the only way to get ahead. So I, I love those there. Now, actually, just before we get into it, Jax, everyone that's watching this on Facebook Live, what do you think of Jax's video there? I've got to say, I think that it's the best quality video and audio I've ever seen with anyone doing a Facebook Live. So comment below and let us know your thoughts there. But hey, Jax, what I would like to talk about today is you and your journey, because it's quite a successful one. You've been in the online course space for, I think, about seven years now. You're doing really well. You know, you've made over 100,000 recently a month. And I, I see a pattern going on in the online world where everyone's, hey, do this course and you'll get a thousand followers next month or, you know, do this course and you'll get your $10,000 months next month and whatever. And sometimes it's not always the case. So I was hoping just to hand it over for you here, Jax, and you can 
start where you want to start with, with your online journey. And over the next sort of 45 minutes or so, let us know how you got to where you started from where you are here. And I'll sort of sit back. And if I see anything that I think we can delve into a little bit deeper or explain it a little bit more for the, the audience, I'll jump in. But I'd love to hand it over to you and, and tell us your story. Sounds good. Well, look, I appreciate the comment about my, about my video. And it's funny that you said that and then, and then jumped in kind of the story with Piano in 21 Days because the way that my video looks right now compared to the way it used to look is very similar to my story overall. I'm all about slow and steady improvement. And so if, if, like, if you look at this video right now compared to my video quality six, seven years ago, um, it's night and day. And so is the success of my business overall. I, um, I started Piano in 21 Days in 2013. Um, March 2013 is when I, when I got the idea. Um, and I was far from an overnight success story. Uh, I thought it was going to be an overnight success story. And the reason is, is because I was listening to a lot of podcasts. Um, you know, we're, we're on a podcast right now, so I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, but a lot of times on podcasts, you hear a lot of really, really uber success stories, right? Um, and so I was, uh, consuming a lot of podcasts at the time and, and, and I would especially enjoy hearing the stories from course creators. And every single one was, you know, I got this idea and then I spent a few weeks and I put this stuff together and I launched it and it was like, I, uh, I, I launched it and then I went and had dinner with my wife. And next thing I know, I checked my bank account. There's $164,000 sitting there, right? That every story I could sum up like that. And so because those are the only types of stories I would hear, I just assumed that would be the same thing, same for me in my piano course. And so I, uh, I put it together for me. It took about eight months to put together. And I launched it. And on the day that I launched it, I had zero sales, none. Um, I did get a sale on day two, one, one sale. And that was a, that was a big moment. Um, and we can get into that a little bit. But it was extremely slow for me at first. And, um, and, and just every, every week, every month, every, every year, I try to get better and better and better. And every year has been better financially, number of course sales and everything than the year before. And so if you add it all up in the course of the past seven years, I've sold over $1.7 million in, in piano courses. And um, the pandemic was really good for my business. There's, I know a lot of online course creators who did very well and some are in niches where overnight it kind of went to nothing. Like I have a friend who, um, teaches, teaches musicians to get higher paying gigs, right? Mm -hmm. Well, his course all of a sudden didn't do very well, but online piano lessons, um, overnight, you know, started doing really well, March, April of this year in 2020. And, uh, and so in the first full month of the lockdown, I, you know, normal, normal revenue for me is like 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 K in a month in revenue. And mm -hmm. my expenses are 20 to 25,000, probably contractors, tools and everything. Um, but the first month of lockdown, it was about $139,000 in revenue. And I had almost 500 new students. Wow. And then in the second month, uh, in, in May, um, I exceeded that and it was about 145,000. Wow. Um, but then it's, it's definitely come back down. And, and yeah. since then, I think I did a, maybe a 75 K month and 85 K month. Um, so there's a couple of months there where I did hit six figures. And I think that's what you were alluding to. And that was just wild. That was wild, man. Um, and, and sales are still up and, and, you know, it's going well and it's, it's a good year so far for, for online piano, um, for online piano lessons, online piano course. Um, so I told you a little bit about the beginning and then what's kind of been going on lately. Where do you want to dive into next? Let's go. I think we start from what you did at the start there. So you did that launch, uh, sent out your, your email, no sales on the first day, one sale in the second. What was the, the next step from there? Oh, no, actually, no, actually let, let's go back a step. When you, <laughs> when you built this course, did you yeah. already have a whole heap of people following you? Or how did you go about that launch? Did you just, you know, um, post on, on some social media? What, tell us about that very first launch. What did you do? John, have you ever read the four hour work week? 
Yes, Tim Ferriss, love it. Yeah, I can't imagine there's many people listening to this or many entrepreneurs today that haven't actually read that book at this point. Um, but that was a big turning point for me when I read that back in like 2008. Mm -hmm. I was a senior in college. I was getting a degree in electrical engineering. And for some reason, I picked up that book and it, it led me to a whole paradigm shift of entrepreneurship. Up, or, up until that point, I had zero interest in being an entrepreneur. I don't know about you, you, you probably wanted to be one all your life. But for me... Up until that point, I thought being an entrepreneur, you had to take out a bunch of debt, brick and mortar presence, lots of employees, lots of headaches, lots of like, work, a ton of hours. And so it never appealed to me, right? I read this book. I'm like, wow, look at all these cool things this guy is doing. He's only working four hours a week. I, I see the path. Like I see, I see that how cool this could be. And so ever since reading that book, I tried to create some sort of um, kind of freedom business like that. And so uh, from 2008 till 2013, um, there was lots of ideas and lots of failed ventures on my part. And I tried six different online business ideas. None of those first six were an online course, physical products, blogs, um, things like that. And, and none of those ever made a dollar. So fast forward to 2013 and I, I get, I have my seventh, I, my, my idea for my seventh business and it's an online piano course. Um, but it didn't really, it, just cause I got the idea, it didn't mean that I knew what I was doing or how, how to execute. Right. I thought that the number one thing to do was to make the course, which that's definitely not the number one thing to do. And so a, a long story, uh, a long way of answering your question of like, did I have an audience? No, I, I didn't. Nobody online knew who I was by any means. I was working my job as an electrical engineer. I did end up getting a job as an electrical engineer. I worked for the same company for eight years. And I, so I was working um, that job. I come home one evening uh, in early 2013 and I felt like I should be working on a side business, like whatever that sixth business was at the time. But instead of working on that business, I found oftentimes after work, I would be playing my piano. I'd be pro procrastinating working on the business by, by pay, playing my piano. So it just kind of hit me one day. Like if this is what I come to when I don't want to do anything else, I wonder if I can make a business out of this. And so I just, uh, I started putting a curriculum together, started um, researching a little bit about like filming videos, audio, like I, I had, didn't have any of that experience. And so uh, a lot of what I learned at the time, I started listening to the Smart Passive Income podcast. Oh, yes. with Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn. Yes. Yeah. So I, I learned a little bit that way with like uh, email lists and lead magnets. So I did put up a lead magnet and, and signed up for, I think, a Weber at the time. I don't use that anymore, but to uh, start collecting email addresses. And so by the time I went to launch it in late 2013, I think I had a small email list because, by the way, I did start putting a few videos on YouTube as well. So there was a few little things I was doing right, but there was a lot I didn't know about either still. And so I launched to a very, very small list because I had started a YouTube channel and had a lead magnet, I was directing people from the YouTube channel over to the, to the lead magnet to download that. So it was a couple hundred people probably. And that's how I ended up making my, my first sale. So um, like I said, long, long way of answering your question of, no, nah, I didn't really have an audience <laughs> when I first launched it. Well, well, I think it's a good little story there because there'll be many different people listening to this podcast. But even that start point there, there'll be a lot of people who are just putting the course together and have no following. There'll be a lot of people that have got a course and have nothing. 200 would even be pretty good for a lot of people yeah. listening to this. So I think that's even a, a lesson there, a few little lessons. Number one, have some sort of a, well, number one, build your email list. That's the, the, the first thing there. Number two, have something in place to build that email list, some sort of lead magnet. Uh, number three, have a way to get people though to that lead magnet. And even mm -hmm. if you just do those three things, at least you're going to do something. At least you're going to make one sale, maybe like Jacques did there. So I think that's a good little story. And it doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube find some sort of way that you can get traffic and then some find some sort of way to convert that traffic into your traffic by getting those people on your email list, then you've essentially got something to sell to. So I think it's a good little story there. So then let's take it from there. So emailed a couple hundred people, made one sale. What did you do? What, what was the, the next improvement that you made from there? Oh man, from there, um, I just, I just stuck with it. I sold a, a few copies of that very f first version. And one of the most important things that I did, um, you know, let's say 10 people bought that first version over the first few months. One of the most important things I did was, was like very, very consistently ask for feedback multiple mm -hmm. times. I would ask people like, Hey, wh what do you think? Are you learning? Like what could be better? And, uh, and that allowed me to put, um, put a even better curriculum 
together when I, when I filmed it for a second time, probably a year later. Um, and, and that's something that I've continued to do over the years is constantly ask for, um, for feedback from my students and even non-students, non-buyers. What, hey, why didn't you buy? And just always try to improve uh, what I've got going on. So, um, so asking for feedback from the students and then just continuing to try to learn. I mean, basically when I launched and, and it was fairly unsuccessful, what I realized was that, okay, I put this thing together, but I've never, I've never really marketed anything in my life. Like I was learning marketing for the first time in my life. And, um, and I was realizing how important it is. Like you could have the greatest product in the entire world, but if you don't know anything about marketing, it just doesn't matter. And so when you think about it that way, marketing is almost more important than, than the product itself. And so I really, um, really started to, um, learn marketing, you know, people like Jeff Walker the product launch formula, um, learning from Pat Flynn, uh, and guys like that, Russell Brunson, and just, just really learning about those things. And, you know, I think one of the big, um, one of the big things that I implemented that was a, a big game changer for me was a, around mid 2016, uh, mid 2016, um, I, I had gone, you know, three years and, and I had built it up to about a thousand dollars a month which, you know, some people hearing that's like, well, that's, a, that's a lot of work to, to only bring in a thousand dollars a month, but I could see, I could see the potential. I knew, I knew where it could go. And the biggest thing, um, the biggest game changer for me was learning about funnels and implementing a really good evergreen funnel mm -hmm. into what I had to offer because ev at, up, up until that point, piano in 21 days.com was basically like a really bad sales page. Like you just go there, you learn a little bit about it and then you can either buy it or not buy it. It's like, basically not even a funnel. And so I was listening to, um, smart passive income mm -hmm. and, and Pat Flynn had, um, a guest on who was, um, and still is, I would say an online course expert, David Simon Garland. And he was basically walking everybody through on that podcast episode, exactly what his evergreen funnel looked like for his course on courses. And I was like, wow, this guy's selling a thousand dollar course and, um, doing very, very, very well. And he's basically giving away exactly what his funnel looks like on this podcast. Let me see if that can work for my online course, my online piano course. And it was basically like a product launch formula uh, style, you know, three pre-launch videos leading to an open cart period, a closed cart period. Um, and he walked through in, in great detail on that podcast episode, how his was set up. And so I took the information in that podcast episode. I also opted in to his funnel and like looked at all the, the timing and the emails and everything. And I set mine up exactly the same as his. I just, you know, obviously had my videos and my content and my branding and everything. And man, I'll tell you pretty much overnight, like flipping the switch on this funnel, like same course, same traffic, like nothing else changed except for implementing this funnel. I went from about a thousand dollars a month to about $10,000 a month wow. in revenue. That's yeah. amazing. All right. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes one thing has a, has a big impact like that. Bang on. Okay. We're going to delve into a few different things here because there's a lot going on there. Um, let me break it down. So I love what Jack said about feedback on many different things. Let's even, let's start with, let's start with feedback in general. Sometimes it can be confronting, especially if you've just started an online course, you haven't sold many of them. You may be a bit self-conscious asking for feedback because you're scared that people are going to say, Hey, your course sucked. It was unprofessional. The sound was bad. The video was bad. I already knew that sometimes that can be scary and, and you don't want to confront that. However, if you don't confront it, you're never going to get better. And Junks is a perfect example from zero, zero dollars a month to $140,000 a month, just by that steady improvement, steady improvement, steady improvement. And let's say we look at it logically Let's say 10 people do your course. Let's say five of them love it and five of them hate it. If you can find out those reasons why those five people hated it, well, hey, why did you hate it? Well, look, you know, video number six, you know, the, the audio was bad or the, you know, the, you didn't even need that or you used a swear word, you know, that just turned me off. And then you can go back and be like, all right, cool. Well, hold on. If I had just fixed up that video number six, then this person would be a raving fan. All right, let me ask the next person what was going on there. Yeah, look, you know, just some of the, you didn't cover this topic here and this topic here and, and this topic here. You know, if you covered those, then it would be good. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to cover those topics there, right? And if you can just go by one, every single bit of negative feedback you get, if you can just fix that problem, you're never going to get that negative feedback again. 
and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better and better. Your course is going to get better. You're going to get more raving fans. You're going to get more testimonials and it's, it's going to go from there. But the only way you can do that, and I guess this goes back to what you said at the very start about focusing on other people, right? You can think it's the best course in the world and you can get defensive if someone's like, oh, well, you know, video number six sucked. You can get defensive and be like, oh, well, it should be in there because of blah, 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 blah. But that's not going to help your audience. See what they don't like about it and make it better. So I think that's a very good point. Uh, and then especially in terms of why people didn't buy. Now, there's a few different things going on here. Jack, so I think you are, I'm not going to say lucky, but you, you made some sales off your first time, which is good. A lot of people will launch and make absolutely zero, right? Now, the fact that you made a couple sales straight up showed potential straight away. Okay, some people are interested in this. I just need to make it better, right? If, if you do a launch and no one buys, you really need to go and do this sort of feedback. Okay, why didn't I buy? Why didn't they buy? And that's going to make their marketing better. I'm sure that's what Jax did as well. Hey, why didn't you buy? Hey, look, the price was too expensive. Oh, okay. So if it was, you know, this amount here, you'd buy. Okay, great. Maybe I dropped the price a few dollars and I triple my sales. Okay, it worked off better, you know? Or hey, you know, it's not what I'm, I'm wanting, Jax. You know what? I want a more advanced thing. Yours is just a beginner's thing. Well, no, mine isn't the beginner's thing. Oh, I just didn't convey that message on the landing page or I didn't convey it on the, the video. So the more you find out why people didn't buy, the more you can tailor your, your marketing to get people like that to buy in the future. So I think that's, um, that's huge there. And then there was, okay. And then just the constant learning side of things, right? It goes back to, to what Jack said before as well, where he's just constantly getting better, constantly getting better, constantly getting better. And especially the marketing side of things. My background is in the fitness world actually. And you see it heaps in the fitness world, you know, because most fitness trainers, they hate sales and marketing. You know, they don't get into the fitness world to be a salesperson. And, and it's the same thing, you know, you can be the best, best personal trainer, best boot camp instructor in the world. If you don't know sales and marketing, you're sitting alone in the park doing push-ups. Same sort of thing with the online course space, right? You can have the best course in the world. If no one knows about it, it's absolutely useless. So that's why the, the, the marketing is so important there. And, it, and it's a split focus where it's like, yes, make your course awesome, but also learn the marketing side of things so people actually do it. Now, let's dive a little bit more into the, the funnel side of things. There's a few things going on there. You, you dropped a few names as well. Let's even simplify that for, for some of the audience that haven't heard them. So Jacques mentioned three of the biggest names in the world when it comes to, to the <laughs> online space. He mentioned Pat Flynn, who's, um, he's got a podcast, the Smart Passive Income Podcast, good podcast to listen to. He mess, mess, mentioned Russell Brunson, who's the owner of ClickFunnels, who's got uh, some of the best books I've, I've ever written. I'm not sure if you've uh, written his, read his series. Of, oh, there we go. Right up, for, the uh, right up there. There we go. Yes. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the, um, the Traffic Secrets. Mm -hmm. and the expert secrets you know mm -hmm. i recommend i recommend everybody read those books there uh jeff walker so have you done his program junks jeff walkers no so the thing about jeff walker is he offers his course for like two thousand dollars to learn yeah. the product launch formula but you can also buy his ten dollar book called yeah. launch and learn pretty much the same material and that you know that's a whole different discussion on courses versus books but no to answer your question i haven't done his course but i i uh, i did end up reading his book with all that information in it Yes. So I, um, I got sucked in. I bought his book and I'm like, this is awesome. I'm buying his program. So I, yeah. I bought the book and, and got sucked in and, and bought his program. But it was, it was a good program. I'm glad I did it. So Jeff Walker runs a system launch. I guess you'd say he's almost the expert in the world when it comes to launching something. Mm -hmm. So he's a good person to follow. Really, really good book to read. Even if you don't go and do his $2,000 course, his $10 book just covers some really, really good stuff. Now, okay, let's talk a little bit about funnels and then evergreen funnels, because there may even be some people listening to this that's like, Jax, what's a funnel and what does evergreen mean? So let's, um, let's, let's simplify that. And then maybe if it's okay with you, you could share some of the funnels you're using at the moment with the listeners to see if they could implement some of those with their, their marketing. Yeah, perfect. So, so my personal definition of a funnel is it's a combination. I, I, I love to simplify things as much as possible. I mean, if you look at the piano, my brand is called piano in 21 days <laughs> and you're not going to find a simpler way to learn piano. That's, that's one of the things that appeals to people. It's like people, there's so many people that have always wanted to learn play, to play piano. It's kind of like a bucket list item, but they don't want to spend years learning how to play piano. So the in comes this, this kid trying to teach you in 21 days, 
it's appealing. You know, it's, it could be seem scammy, but it's, it's also appealing. And that's one of the reasons I did so well with the quarantines because all these people are like, well, now I can finally learn piano. You know, I, I might, might only have three weeks. Let's, uh, let's give it a, a go. So um, my definition of a funnel is it's a combination of web pages, videos, and emails that uh, builds rapport and relationships with your potential customers and customers um, and, and leads them to a sale in a non-salesy way. Mm. That's what I think a funnel is. Um, and so then you just have to figure out what those web pages, emails, and videos are that you need to create um, and in what order for your particular funnel. Yes. Mine to this day still looks pretty similar to the one I had set up back in 2016. So you opt in and then a couple days later, I'll email out. And by the way, you opt in for a free workbook. Um, I have this workbook on my website. It's called Learn 36 Popular Songs in Five Days. It's essentially the first five days of my course in a book form. But then I, I just kind of created a catchy title for it. Um, and then you opt in for that for free. That's been downloaded oh, 130,000 times probably. Ooh. And couple of days later, you get a video from me and it's video one. It's, it's basically the first video of three in a, in a series. And it's still this product launch formula style where you, you, you kind of figure out a topic or really you want to, you want to figure out three different things that people struggle with most in your niche. Right. And then you build a whole video around each of them. And then you kind of break down why that won't be a problem for the, for the person on the other end through, um, through stories from your own life or for, from, your store, from your student's life. Um, and so I have three of those videos and the first one goes out a couple of days after you opt in and then a couple of days later you get the second video and then a couple of days after that you get the third video. And then uh, after that, there's a five day open cart, closed cart period. So everybody that opts in then gets a five day window uh, of buying it or not buying it. And to execute that, I use a software called deadline funnel. Um, and that's, that's essentially what my funnel looks like. That's what I had set up back in 2016. The big change that I've made since then a couple of years ago is, you know, if you notice one of the biggest problems with that funnel is if is, is over the course of like the first week, you, people don't really have the opportunity to buy. So what I've done uh, over the course of that first week is I put an evergreen webinar mm. in a few strategic places over that first week. And so those that are really, really hot or, uh, or, the t or are the type of person to want to watch a two hour webinar versus drip feed these shorter videos, you know, it just kind of gives everybody the opportunity to, to consume my information and buy in the way that works best uh, for them. So I implemented that evergreen webinar into the funnel a couple years ago. And now, uh, I just have a really, really, really nice funnel going for piano in 21 days. Yes. Love that. Okay. So break that down a little bit for the listeners. So Jax's funnel is essentially, and I'm guessing the opt-in you've sort of got that everywhere. It's on your website. It's in your, um, I don't know if you've got a Facebook group, it's uh, on your YouTube channel, anywhere anyone goes, there's an yep. opportunity for them to, to opt in for that free thing. Right. Right. Cool. So let's even spend a minute there. I think a lot of course creators want to go for that hard sell straight away. You know, Hey, go and buy my thing. Here's my sales page where it's got all the info and all the testimonials, you know, go and buy it. And not always the best strategy because a lot of people won't buy straight away because they don't know you like you trust you. And then also you almost lose if they don't buy there, you almost lose that sale then and there because the chances of them remembering your website and going back are very, very slim, right? But if they opt into something, okay, great. It's a free, they're more likely to opt in because it's something for free and who doesn't like free stuff, right? My grandparents don't even speak English and they, can, they, they know the word free, right? So you see the word free, that's definitely gonna get people in there. And that essentially gives you the opportunity to sell and market to them a few times. It's not just a one shot, you know, where they see your website and sign up. Maybe the first email resonates, maybe the second email resonates, maybe the webinar resonates, you know, it gives them a few opportunities there. So I think that's important. And also important that the opt-in is good as well, right? Yes. And, it goes, and it goes back to the, the client thing too, where it's like, you may think this is a good, good opt-in, but what's the, what does the client want? What's going to make them be like, yep, that's exactly, or what does the customer want? What's going to make them be like, this is this thing for free. That's exactly what I want. Cause a lot of people are hesitant to give their email these days. Right. Cause they know you're going to try and sell them something, you know, and me, me as well. Like 
I've got a, a Yahoo email that I'll give any idiot, but my official email, I'll only give that if I really, really want the thing, right? So if it's, um, cause I don't even check that Yahoo one. I don't even know the password. I just do it to, to get access to something, but, um, to give it, if it's something that I really want, then I'll put my official email in there, you know? So it's important that that lead magnet is something that people actually want. Um, and then from there, so what Jarks does is they'll get a few automated emails, you know, hey, here's video one, here's video two, uh, just giving content, here's video three. And these videos to simplify, uh, almost like sales videos without being sales videos. All right, they're, they're not videos that are like, hey, I've got this course and it's 20% off and it includes this, 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 and this. It's more like, um, a con it's more content based, but we're subtly doing little sales things in there to make these people realize, hold on, you know, this guy's got a point. If I could just do this thing here, then I could learn piano. And this thing here is essentially buy the 21 day piano course. Is that, is that in a nutshell what those videos are? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the very first one that you'll get, it's called um, Eight Reasons Traditional Piano Lessons Don't Work. And mm -hmm. the reason that one's there and it's first is because at this point, you know, a couple of days into being introduced to me and my system, they may be weighing like an online course versus going to take in-person lessons. Because what's in most people's head when they think about learning piano is, okay, I need to look up some local piano teacher and start going to weekly lessons. So I need to, uh, in that first video, explain to them why that's not most likely not a good approach for them. It's, you know, it exists and there's a reason it exists and it does work uh, for some people and that's a whole different discussion. But for most people, that's not a good approach. Here's why. And here's why an online course, specifically one like piano in 21 days is better. So it breaks down that barrier. Um, so that's just an example. And by the way, I do want to go back to a couple of points you made about that opt-in, if yeah. you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So uh, you, go. yeah. you said that it has to be good content. That's, that's, I mean, that's obvious, but yes, don't just throw something together. Mm -hmm. One of the, one of the pieces of content I'm most proud of is that free workbook. And one of the big things that you have to think about with something like that is quick wins. You got to give, give your mm -hmm. students, give your prospective customers quick wins to really start to, um, to build trust that they can learn even more from you. And so there's a lot of quick wins in that workbook. And then you also talked about, you know, your, your kind of your fake, e fake email versus your good email. One other tip um, that I do is once somebody opts in, they don't immediately get the thing mm. on the next page. They get it in their email mm. because all of my selling is going to be coming through email. So right off the bat, from the beginning of the relationship, I want people to be in the habit of getting good things from me in their email. And so like in your case, if you put in your Yahoo email, you don't even know the password. You're going to be like, Oh, you know, on the next page, it says, go check your email. You're like, dang it. He got me. And you're probably going to hit back and submit your real email. Yes. Bang on. Really, really good points there. I love that one there. And I think that's just a really good tactic. You know, if anyone's listening to this, there's just a good tactic that's going to increase your, your email deliverability as well. You know, it's probably gone to their junk half the time anyway. Even if they did give you their real email, it goes to their junk. At least now, oh, it went to my junk. Let me transfer it into the inbox. Cool. Now I'm going to get these. I love the, the quick wins as well because that builds trust. It's like, because if you just send someone something crap, okay, great. You send them, you got their email, but it doesn't do anything. But if you can give them a, a quick win, oh man, this guy knows his stuff. You know, he gave me, he, that, that was a quick win there. Great. Imagine what he does in the pay thing. So yeah, exactly. Love that there. And I think the, that barriers was a, a perfect, a perfect thing where Jack said, where the first video was uh, face to face versus online. Because a lot of people, I think when they want to give value is they give the actual thing that's behind the course. And that's got its place as well. And you can do a little bit of that, but just think about it like that. When Jarks is giving value, he's not saying, Hey, he's less than one to play the piano. You know, you do bang, 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 you know, here's the key or whatever it is. It's like, here's why online course stuff is good. And that can um, hook people in there. So I think that's good there. Uh, where did I want to go from here? Okay, cool. And then, so, and, th and what Jarks means by evergreen is that it's going automatically. So someone opts in, it's like, great, you know, they've, they've opted in for that thing. A couple of days later, they get an email. A couple of days later, they get an email. A couple of days later, they get an email. Jarks isn't going there and sending those emails manually. They're all happening there. Now, he's got then an open cart and a closed cart. So to simplify that, to, to my understanding, what Jarks is doing is being like, all right, if I give these people the opportunity to join anytime, chances are they're probably never going to join in their life. But if I say, hey, you know, it starts at, at this point here or it's at a discount at 
you know, this point here, you can join any time, but it's double the price or you don't get this bonus or, or whatever it is. I found if you don't give people a reason to act, they probably won't act because people are people, right? Same as what we do. But if it's like, oh, hold on, I would have got this course for X amount of dollars anyway. But if I register today and I get this bonus or I get it a bit cheaper or I can't get it if I don't know now or I have to wait a few times, that's giving people a reason to act now. Is that the theory behind that, Charles? Yeah. I mean, as you know, scarcity is one of the most powerful uh, things you can implement in terms of getting somebody to, to actually go over the edge to, to, to pay for what it is that you have to offer. It's, it's, people are scared of missing out, you know, and that's, that's what I try to instill through my sequence. It's like, it, 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 you know, toward the beginning, it's like, Hey guys, this is now available. This great thing. You know, it's got this, this, and this, this is what it's going to do for your life. But towards the end, it's more like, you're going to miss out on this. Like you got to jump in before you lose this opportunity. Then the messaging is very different from the, at the beginning versus the end. Um, and so you're appealing to those, to those different, um, different aspects of, of, uh, people's, uh, psycho psychological interest. And the end is, you know, the, the last day of the cart being open, um, that day when it's closing is, is when I get the most sales because of that reason. Yes, they get me in all the time. I'm a fear of missing out sort of guy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Jacques also mentioned he uses a software deadline funnels because you might be thinking, well, hold on, you know, how does that work, Jacques? How does it, you know, if someone opts in today and then someone opts in tomorrow, how do you monitor all that? Jacques uses a, a specific um, software called deadline funnels, which essentially does that for you. Is that right, Jacques? That's what it does. It makes uh, authentic deadlines. So for example, if I didn't have deadline funnel and I say, okay, it, okay, Jono, you know, cart's closing on August the 21st at midnight. And then you go check your email on August 22nd and click the link and you can still get to the sales page in the order form. Well, then that wasn't very authentic at my, on my part. Um, but what deadline funnel allows me to do is automate all that, make it, make it so everybody's got their own personal launch. And when I say the card is going to close, it actually closes. Mm, because, and for the listeners out there, let's say, for example, I got that email from Jacques and he's like, Hey, you got to register by August the 13th or whatever it is. Right. And I check my calendar and it's August the 15th and the coupon code still works. I'm like, okay, I don't need to act as quickly for this guy. You know, next time he sends me another special, I'll give it another day or two. That'll still be right, open. Now, right. if anyone's interested in that software, you've got a link you could give people, Jocks? Oh man, I, yeah, definitely do. I've got a good relationship with um with the with the guys at Deadline Funnel. Now they have, um, I promote this on my podcast a lot, but they have a double free trial set up for my audience. Um, and I guess you know if you've listened to my podcast or time or two, that's probably the reason you're asking that question. But yeah, you can get a 28 day free trial, which is double normal uh, by using DeadlineFunnel.com. Uh, slash OCG, which stands for online course guy. Okay. Uh, so yeah, appreciate that. That's um, yeah. It's one of my favorite, favorite tools. Um, I've got, you know, about five tools that are just, I just couldn't live without in my business. And that's definitely one of them. Let's um, let's spend a minute there actually. Cause what I think we might do. So if you're listening on the podcast, I'll put these links in the show notes. If you're listening on Facebook, I'll put them in the, the comments down there. Did you want to give us just a really quick rundown on those, those few tools, Jacques? Just like a minute or two? What's the tool? Why is it important? If you want to, man, I, I can geek out on tools. Like I could talk <laughs> about it for hours if you want to. Give, give us your, uh, your top five and 30 seconds on each. Okay. So you mentioned uh, how much you like and respect Russell Brunson and a lot of his, um, a lot of his books and, and, and training and everything. And, and that's one of the reasons ClickFunnels has been so successful is because you've got such a charismatic guy on the top of it, but it's also great software too. And it's uh, it makes building funnels, you know, I mentioned funnels are a collection of web pages, emails, and videos. Well, it, it makes that uh, web pages part and the structure of a funnel just so easy. So I use ClickFunnels for my funnels. I actually host my courses there uh, as well. And so ClickFunnels is definitely, definitely up there for me. Deadline funnel, uh, I use a tool called Bonjoro, which, uh, you know, it's funny, you're, you're down in Australia, right? Mm. The, uh, the creator of Deadline Funnel, while he's an American, does live in Australia. And oh. then the guys that created Bonjoro, which I want to talk about next, uh, okay. those are Australian guys as well. Oh, wow. um, so bon Bonjoro is a tool. Are you familiar with it, Jono? I've heard you talk about it. Yeah. I get the idea, but I've never used it. So I don't know exactly how it works. So I, I'm learning here and I'd love it if you could spend cool. a minute or two about it. Bonjour is a tool I use every day, pretty much every day. Um, it, it makes it very, very, very easy to send a personal video to anybody that has an email address. 
So what that means as a course creator is I have an automation set up to where anytime somebody buys my piano course, a task is automatically created in the Bonjoro app. And then it makes it easy for me to just click on it. It'll say, you know, uh, April um, bought the piano in 21 days ultimate course uh, yesterday. And so I'll click on it and I'll just, and I'll hit start record and I'll say, Hey, April, uh, Jacques just wanted to personally welcome you to piano in 21 days. So excited to have you part of the course. Good luck to you. Let me know if you need anything. It takes about 12 seconds. And then all of a sudden within 24 hours of somebody signing up for the course, they have a personal welcome video from the creator and instructor of that course. And so I've been doing that for uh, two or three years now. And the reason I started doing it actually is I, when I started my podcast about three years ago, I, I'm obviously a big fan of online courses. So I took Pat Flynn's podcasting course. And when I signed up for his podcasting course three years ago, I had one of these Bonjoro videos from him. And it just blew me away that a guy of that uh, magnitude would take 20 seconds out of his day to, to personalize a video to me. And, and you know, I'm, I'm big into automation. I used to be an engineer. Like I understand the back end of things, but he literally said, Hey Jacques, this is Pat. And there's not a lot of Jacques out there. So I knew that it was personal to me. Whereas if my name was John, I would have been like, Oh, you know, he sent that same video to every John. So on that very day, I'm like, if, if Pat Flynn can do this, then I can do this for my piano students. So from that day, Till, you know, till now, I've been using Bonjour and sending out these, these videos to everybody that signs up. I've sent over 3,000 of those videos at this point, and it's a, it's a part of my process every day. And it's, it's only like $20 a month. It's a very inexpensive tool. So, Jono, you should check it out. It's a good yeah. tool. I, I think I, yeah, I, I've, I've been half sucked in for about a year. Or whenever I first <laughs> heard you talk about it, I'm like, I like that idea, but I just haven't got around to, you know, downloading in that. But what we might do from there, so I know you've got, you know, affiliate links and people get little deals and that um, if they go by you. What we might say is I'll put your links in the show notes. If you want those links on Facebook on some of the tools that Jacques mentioned, just write links down below and then either me or Jacques will, will get them over to you. Um, just be- There's a few questions I like to finish up with, Jacques. Just before we get to them, I, I do have one question on, on the funnel side of things. What happens if someone doesn't buy within those five days? Are they just gone. We never email them again. We never speak to them again. Or, or what happens there? Yeah. So I have a whole relaunch process, right? Cause uh, somebody goes through within about the, the funnel, the evergreen funnel ends about 12 or 14 days after they, they first uh, opt in. Um, and then the cart closes, they, they try to, they try to click on things and it, and it all, it's all closed. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're never going to buy from me. That just means that they weren't ready right now. Cause I promise you, I did everything I possibly could do other than knocking on their door and, and, and doing an in-person sales pitch to try to get them to buy. And so that just meant that right then wasn't good for them. So what they do, what, what I do with them next is I put them onto kind of my main email list. And then I might start sending them some value videos as I make a new YouTube video or something. Um, and, and look, I'm not, I don't have a, 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 like a weekly value email or anything. This is like maybe every month if, if I'm not being lazy at that point in time. But then what will happen is they will then get relaunched to every four months. No matter, no matter what point it is that they finish the funnel, every four months they'll get relaunched to. And the way I do that is when, when somebody finishes the evergreen sequence, they'll go into one of four buckets depending on what month it currently is. Um, and so I do it that way for a couple of reasons. One is I like to have consistent income. So rather than doing one big launch uh, a couple times a year to my old email list, I do it that way to keep my income more consistent. So basically I'm relaunching to a quarter of my email list every month. Uh, but then the other, the other reason I do that is because it keeps things more consistent and real from the, from the other person's perspective as well. Mm-hmm. So if I were just doing a couple of big launches every year, well, let's say somebody finishes the evergreen sequence doesn't buy in July and I have my big launch schedule for August. Well, that's kind of weird for, for them to see on the other end. And so you'll, they'll always get it four months later, um, doing it this way. And, and, you know, I just kind of picked the four month time frame and the four buckets and, and I've done that for three or four years now. And that just, that's worked really well. Yes. Love it. Awesome. All right. Wait, there's a few questions I like to always finish up with Jax. The first one being an on, and you've already answered this question, but I'll ask it again in case anyone missed it and, and uh, wants to know. So I ask every single one of my guests what platform it is that they actually 
host their course on. There's a heap yeah. of them out there. There's Teachable, Kajabi, uh, New Zenler, Thinkific. I could go all day. Your platform of choice to host the actual course. ClickFunnels. Um, I, I love ClickFunnels. It does a lot well, and it really does funnels well. It's getting behind on the course side. And I'm about to re-record um, my course for like the sixth time. And I am going to, I'm about to do like a detailed in-depth, like let's analyze all of the course platforms. And, uh, and I'm going to share that with my online course uh, show audience, that process. And I'm legitimately going to figure out if ClickFunnels is the best place for my piano course gonna, to, to be or one of these other platforms. Because there's a lot of them out there now. And uh, man, ClickFunnels just, it was great when I set it up three years ago for my course, but they're just getting left behind at this point. Mm, yes, I'm finding that as well. I've just switched over myself too. Um, because I, and I guess it's because they do all the other stuff so well, right? Their funnels yeah. are so good. Their landing pages are so good. It's almost hard to be good at everything, right? Especially when there's people that are doing specific stuff for courses. Uh, now, I'll just, I'll just back up a bit because I think you said something cool. Are you going to do an analysis, you said, of the different platforms and share it with your audience? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record a very, very, very long video where I literally go up and sign up for all the demos and trials and everything and start building out my course in all the different platforms. And, uh, and I've got this list of features that I would like to see in an online course platform. And I'll just be like checking off which ones fulfill those, those, those list of things that I would like to see. And then I'll make an educated decision at the end of it because only, only I can determine what's going to be the best fit for me and my audience. Right. Mm. Just because, um, you know, you, Jono, if you, if you like new Zendler or whatever you use, uh, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be the best fit for piano in 21 days. Mm. And up until this point, I think ClickFunnels has been a good fit for piano in 21 days, but it may not be going forward. So I really need to do the due diligence of figuring out, figuring that out. And I think if I document that, process, I think people will get a lot of value out of that. Yes. So I think every single one of my listeners and, and watchers would, would want to see that. Where's the, actually, we'll, I might just, if you're interested in seeing that, just write course platform down below on Facebook and me or Jarks will find a way to get it over to you. Are you going to, is that going to be on your podcast or where's the best place for people to, your Facebook group? I think, I think something like that will be best for uh, on, on video. So that'll probably yeah. be on the online course guy, a uh, YouTube channel, but I am going to start documenting that a little bit on the online course show podcast as well. And I'm starting to get some of the creators of these platforms uh, lined up to, um, to come on the podcast. Cause that's one of the, one of the mm -hmm. steps that I didn't mention that I'm taking is, is actually talking to the people that made these platforms and be like, look, here's, here's my people, here's my students, and here's what I'm looking for. Convince me why I should be on your platform. Yes. Love that. Awesome. Yeah. I think that'll be a hit. I'm definitely going to tune into that. Make sure you, you let me know. Now, the next question I like to finish up with is all around mentors. Now you've already dropped a three, uh, three of them already with Pat Flynn, Russell Brunson, and Jeff Walker. Anyone else you want to give a shout out to, or are they probably the big three people that you follow? Uh, though, man, it's, you know, Pat Flynn is just the most genuine and authentic uh, big time marketer out there. Um, so, so he's definitely still there and Russell Brunson as well. Uh, I don't follow Jeff Walker as much anymore. I don't know. I don't like the other guys have like podcasts and, mm. <laughs> and are doing all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what Jeff Walker's up to these days. So I haven't consumed his information lately. Um, but then another, another name I haven't dropped, um, that's a lot of people would be familiar with would be uh, Donald Miller, like he oh, is, yes. his stuff on, on story brand and, and marketing, um, in the past couple of years has been, uh, absolutely amazing. I've learned a ton from him as well. Yes. And that's a, a good book. If you haven't read that book, story brand by Donald Bill Miller, one of the mm -hmm. best marketing books out there. Uh, you've almost answered my next question. That was books. You've dropped a couple of them as well. A couple of Russell Brunson's books, uh, Donald Miller's one there. Any other books you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. So um, the number one book for a course creator, we've mentioned it, Expert Secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely the best book uh, for course creators. Um, and that's, it's, it's for course creators. Like a lot of people don't even realize it based on the title. Um, and then of course, story brand, which is, which is more for marketing in general. But um, if we're talking about books that I most recommend for people trying to um, market their courses, that would be definitely one there. And then um, just if, if I could throw out a, just an author who I've consumed all of his books and I haven't yeah. mentioned him yet either, but uh, Mike Michalowicz, big fan, oh, uh, yes. profit first clockwork. Yes. 
Um, his latest one, Fix This, Fix this Next. Um, just an amazing, amazing author for small business owners. Um, and I'm a big fan and I read all the books that he, he puts out there. Yes. I'm a big fan of profit first. That's how I run my whole business budget. Yeah. That same. was, yeah, I was just missing. I'm like, well, how much do I reinvest back into the business? How much do I pay people? So that, that just helped clear that up. So Jux, we're coming to the end of the podcast. Someone's listening to this. They're like, you know what? This is great. I like this guy. He's cool. Where's the best place for people to follow you? Is it your podcast? Is it your Facebook group? Is it your Facebook page, Instagram? Where should we go? <laughs> I appreciate it, man. So there's obviously piano in 21 days.com. And then on the online course side, I, course side, I have the online course guy.com. Um, but the biggest, the biggest resource I, ha- I put out over there is my podcast, which is just called the online course show. So that would be the, the main way to learn more about courses for me. Awesome. I'll put all these links in the show notes on Facebook as well. Um, you've got about three minutes, Jacques. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your, your course for course creators in three minutes? Can you do that? Someone's like, all right, I want to do this guy's course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, so at this point in time, basically everything that I have to offer on this business is free. And that's because unlike my piano uh, course business, um, there's a lot of great opportunities for affiliates and partnerships um, with, with online courses. Mm-hmm. Because as you know, when you run an online course, when you're starting an online course, growing an online course, there's so many like tools. We talked about three of them basically here, but there's so many tools you'll need. Um, I don't really rely on affiliate income on the piano side. Cause it's like, okay, I could, I could be an affiliate for like a piano, but that's about mm-hmm. it. There's no other tool you need. So I rely on course sales, uh, over there on the piano side, but this side, it's a really great win-win if I can offer a lot for free and just be very transparent about that. Like, Hey, I'm throwing all this free content out there with the hope that, um, if you're going to sign up for these, these different tools and softwares, uh, anyway, if you've got anything out of my training, I'll hope that you'll use my affiliate link. And in a lot of a lot of times, I've, I've set up deals with the with the, um, the the companies to actually provide extra incentives for my audience, like like I mentioned with Deadline Funnel. Um, and so at this point, you know, you can get into um, my beginner course uh, just by 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 buying actually a copy of Expert Secrets for seven dollars and ninety nine cents. You get access to my beginner course, um, or I have a more advanced course. Um, for existing course creators called next level courses that people can get into simply by signing up for click funnels. Um, and I might tweak it a little bit here and there, but I, I, I think I'll always have some sort of affiliate model to make it just such a good, uh, win win. So you can find out about both of those programs over at the online course guy, G U Y.com. Love it. I would, anyone listening to this, go on and get that expert secret deal. If you haven't read it, you got to read that book anyway. Why not read it and get a free course from Jax as well? Win win. Um, awesome. All right, Jax, that's all I wanted to cover for today. Anything I missed or anything I should have asked you but didn't, or anything you want to finish us off with? Um, well, that's a broad question. Um, I mean, <laughs> at the end got, of the day, you've got 30 seconds or less. Yeah, I know, right? At the end of the day, this is not necessarily easy. Um, you know, learning the piano isn't easy either, um, but that doesn't mean it's not worth it. And you just have to find, um, find, find a system that works, find, find somebody out there that's done what you want to do, maybe model what they've done. I mean, that's how I find a lot mm-hmm. of my success, you know, just take the, take the story of me talking about modeling that funnel. Um, and, and I promise, I promise it's worth it. I get it. I get emails, messages, Instagram, whatever, every day from people, either on the piano side, the online course guy, it's like Jacques, you know, I, people literally use the words change my life. And that's still unbelievable to the, at this point. Um, but you know, learning the piano has the ability to change people's life. And I'm sure uh, people out there have courses and niches, uh, that could change people's lives or lives or have ideas for courses. And at the end of the day, if you have an, if you, if you are good at something that can genuinely help people and possibly change their lives, but you don't put a course together and you don't get that information out there and try to help people do those things. Then at the end of the day, like that's on you, like that, that, that's a problem right there. So Mm -hmm. I would definitely encourage you to to put that information out there and start trying to help people um, in whatever way that you can. Love it. Awesome. I know you've got a heart out, Jock, so I'm going to leave you to it. All right. I appreciate it, John. Thank you. Okay. Bye.